On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the cross, the old rugged cross, till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the cross, the old rugged cross, and exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, that old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. Hello and welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here with me today. As always, it's, it's just grand to have you coming here and, and worshiping your God uh, via these videos. It's, it's wonderful to have you here. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for being here. I hope that this day finds you in good spirits and in the good graces of our God. This morning we're going to have the same basic worship service that we always have. There'll be a couple of songs of praise, a song to get us ready to partake of the Lord's Supper, and then we'll have the Lord's Supper. There'll be another song of worship following that, and then there will be the lesson, a song of worship, and that will be it for our lesson today. Again, thank you for being here. You know, it means a lot to know that people are out there watching these. And what I'd really like is for you to share these. Share them with anybody that you want to, because this is just the Word of God. That's all that's on here. And if you would, share them with folks. Let them see it. You, you can just say, hey, go here and look at this. And go out on YouTube and, and look for me. And those videos are there and you can share them with your friends, you can share them with your family, you can share them with people that are interested or whomever. It would be grand to know that everybody has an opportunity to hear the Word of God. This morning, before we begin, let's go to our God in prayer. Father, thank you so very much for being our God. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for all the wonders of our lives, all the days that you've granted us to this day. Be with us, Father, as we now take a moment to worship you, our God. Allow us, Father, to do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Allow us, Father, to open our hearts and our minds to your word and to listen and understand to what it is your word is saying to us. Be with us through this service, Father, and please bless it. Forgive us of our many sins. Be with those that are sick or afflicted. Heal them as it is your will. It's in Jesus' dear and holy name that we pray. Amen. We'll begin our worship service now. Thanks so much for being here. Is it for me, dear Savior, thy glory and thy rest? For me, so meek and sinful, oh, shall I be so blessed? O Savior, my Redeemer, what can I but adore? And magnify and praise Thee, and love Thee evermore. Is it for me Thy welcome, Thy gracious entering? For me thy come, ye blessed, for me so full of sin. O Savior, my Redeemer, what can I but adore? And magnify and praise thee, and love thee evermore. O Savior, precious Savior, my heart is at thy feet. I bless thee and I love thee 
and thee I long to meet. O Savior, my Redeemer, what can I but adore? And magnify and praise thee and love thee evermore. I'll be with thee forever and never grieve thee more. Dear Savior, I must praise thee and love thee evermore. O Savior, my Redeemer, what can I but adore? And magnify and praise thee and love thee evermore. Though dark and dreary be life's way and burdens hard to bear, there's one whose love will never fail, my heart shall ne'er despair. My hope is stayed in him today, and he will safely lead to that sweet home beyond the sea. Christ's love is all I need. Christ's oh, love his love, is precious all love, I need. all I need each day. Need each day. I know, yes, I know, I know. precious love Christ's precious is all, love is all, all I need. trials pressed on every side and many stairs there be i look in simple faith to him who calmed the stormy sea he is the shepherd kind and true his sheep he'll ever feed this cheers me on and makes me strong christ's love is all i need christ's oh his love is Precious love, all I need, need, each, day. need each day. I know, yes, I know. I know. Precious love, Christ's precious is love is all, all I need. need. He'll lead, oh, he'll lead me safely, yes, he'll lead safely on, on, life's on life's way. I know, oh, I know. I Christ's know. precious, His precious love is all I need. I need. I need. And when I hear the boatman's call come cross the chilly tide, I shall not fear to launch my bark, for Christ is at my side. He bore the sting of death for me, has met my every need. And so I sing the sweet refrain, Christ's love is all I need. Christ's oh, love His love is Precious love, all I need, need each day. Yes, I know, precious love, precious love is all I need. He'll oh, He'll lead me safely, safely on on my way. I know, I know, Christ, precious, precious love is all I need. I need. my Savior, waiting the coming day, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose, he arose with a mighty triumph o'er his foes, he arose, he arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with the saints to reign. He arose, he arose, he arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Vainly they watch his bed, Jesus my Savior, vainly they seal the dead, Jesus my Lord. Up from
from the grave he arose, he arose with a mighty triumph o'er his foes, he arose, he arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign, he arose, he arose, he arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Death cannot keep his prey, Jesus my Savior. He tore the bars away, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose, he arose with the mighty triumph o'er his foes. He arose, he arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, he arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. I thought this morning what I would do is read to you from the Gospel of Matthew, the 27th chapter, before we partake of the Lord's Supper. I'll begin in the 38th verse of the 27th chapter of Matthew. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, You who destroyed the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests also, mocking with the scribes and elders, said, He saved others himself he cannot save. If he is the King of Israel, let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him reviled him with the same thing. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood there, when they heard that, said, The man is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with the sour wine, and put it on a reed, and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, Let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then, turn over to the next chapter, the 28th chapter. I'll begin at the first verse. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. Behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who is crucified. He is not here, for he has risen. As he said, Come and see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Briefly, what we have read here is the crucifixion, death, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Earlier in this same gospel, he set forth a memorial for us to remember him by with with bread and with the fruit of the vine. The bread was a representation of his precious body that was hung on that cross. The fruit of the vine, his precious blood that he shed freely for us. Christians today everywhere are remembering Jesus the Christ and his sacrifice. The miracle that he hung on the cross and died was in the tomb for three days and was raised from the dead. This he did for us, this he did to sacrifice himself, that we could believe in life after death, in life with our God and Jesus the Christ. This morning there'll be a brief pause after I ask a blessing for the bread and the fruit of the vine. 
Take a moment to consider these things. Take a moment to consider that Jesus died for us. He suffered that brutal death on the cross that we might forever be able to be called sons of God through His sacrifice. Bow with me now as we ask the blessing for the bread and the fruit of the vine. Father, once again we come before you today thanking you so very much for this great sacrifice and this time of remembrance of Jesus Christ our Savior. We thank you for this bread and we ask a blessing upon it. The representation of that precious body that was so brutally beaten and hung on that cross. We thank you for this fruit of the vine, the representation of that blood that was shed on our behalf to cleanse us from our sins. Thank you for this, Father, and thank you for this opportunity to stop and think about what it took to save us from ourselves. Allow us, Father, to contemplate these things and remember Jesus the Christ, who sacrificed himself for us, that we might have the opportunity and be able to live with you, our God, throughout all eternity. It's in his blessed name that we pray. Amen. I know not why God's wondrous grace to me He hath made known, nor why unworthy Christ in love redeemed me for His own. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that He is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know not how the Spirit moves convincing men of sin, revealing Jesus through the Word, creating faith in him. But I know who I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know not what of good or ill may be reserved for me of weary ways or golden days before his face i see but i know whom i have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which i've committed unto him against that day i know not when my Lord may come at night or noonday fair, nor if I'll walk the veil with him or meet him in the air. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. This morning's readings are going to cover a subject that I'll have a little discussion for you following these readings. Because there's things that we need to know, there's things that we need to get our arms around. And I think you'll see where I'm going with it when we read these, these scriptures. I'll begin this morning in the book of Deuteronomy in the Old Testament, in the sixth chapter, beginning at verse 5. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And then over in the eleventh chapter, Verse 1, Therefore you shall love the Lord your God and keep His charge, 
His statutes, His judgments, and His commandments always. Joshua. Beginning at verse 22. I'm sorry, chapter 22, verses 5 and 11. But take careful heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all His ways, to keep His commandments, to hold fast to Him, and to serve Him with all your heart and with all your soul. Verse 11, Now the children of Israel heard someone say, Behold, the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh had built an altar on the frontier of the land of Canaan in the region of the Jordan on the on the children of, of, of Israel's side. Then Matthew verse or beginning at chapter 22 verses 34 through 40 But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him, saying, Teacher, what is the greatest commandment of the law? And Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law of the prophets. Then, in the Gospel of John, chapter 5, beginning at verse 30, I can of myself do nothing as I hear I judge, and my judgment is righteous, because I do not seek my own, will but the will of the Father who sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another who bears witness of me, and I know that that witness which he witnesses of me is true. You have sent to John, and he has borne witness to the truth. Yet I do not receive testimony from man, but I say these things that you may be saved. He was the burning and shining lamp, and you were willing for a time to rejoice in his light, but I have a greater witness than John's. For the works which the Father has given me to finish, the very works that I do, bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. And the Father himself who sent me has testified of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. But you do not have his word abiding in you, because whom he sent, him you do not believe. You search the scriptures for him, for them which you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me, but you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. I do not receive honor from men, but I know you, that you do not have the love of God in you. I come from my Father, I come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If anyone comes in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe? who receive honor from one another and do not seek the honor that comes from the only God. Do not think that I shall accuse you to the Father. There is one who accuses you, Moses, in whom you trust. For if you believe Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? Then chapter 14 in the same gospel, beginning at verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. And then, over towards the end of our Bible in 1 John, chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, 
Truly, the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. And over in chapter 4 of 1 John, verses 7 through 21, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested to, the, to usward, that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation of our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and His love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in Him, and He in us, because He has given us of His Spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in Him, and He in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he loved us first. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Then, turn over to, back to the Old Testament, in Proverbs, in the 6th chapter, I'll begin at verse 16 and read through 19. These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to Him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that deceived, that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift to running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among the brethren. And finally, this morning what I would like to read to you is Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is God, man's all. There's something that's been eating at me for a while now, and I thought I would have these readings and have a discussion about it. You know, that word love, we kind of walk on that nowadays. You know, everybody uses that word sometimes to excess. Oh, well, I love this, I love that. As a human being, I understand love. I love my family. I love my wife, I love my children, I love deep and hard for family and children and, and wife, but in the same thought, you know, I love my pets, I love my horse, I love my little dog, to love, to be loved. That's something that we easily wrap our arms around. In fact, like I said, we use that word a lot and sometimes too much. When we use the word love, do we really mean that we love? You know, brotherly love is, is the love of our brethren. And it, it, there's, there should be nothing that you wouldn't do to help a brother or a sister. That's brotherly love. But then I go back and I look at what it is to love God. 
We love God because He first loved us. We love God because He saved us from being forever without Him from eternal damnation through His Son, Jesus Christ. But when you say you love God, do you really? John tells us that there's, you're a liar if you don't love your brother and you say you love God. But wrap your arms around that for a second. Do you love God? And remember, we read the scripture, God hates a liar. When you say, God, I love you, do you really love God? I've done some soul searching about that. You know, when we pray, we're always asking for something. We should be asking and thanking. But how many times when you pray, do you honestly meanfully say, God, I love you. Well, how do we know we love God? Pretty easy. Those, those scriptures tell us the way that we know that we love Him is because we do what we're told. We do His commandments. But well, what are His commandments? To love Him with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, with everything that we are. And to love our neighbor as ourselves. On this, all the laws are bounded. If you if you think about that for a minute, love of your neighbor, love of your brother. You wouldn't do things to yourself that would hurt you, or that would cheat you, or that would that would be bad to you, and you wouldn't do that to your neighbor if you loved your neighbor as yourself. And that's how you show God that you love Him. The warning that I have for you today is don't do word service. Don't just say, God, I love you. Do your very best to obey your God. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your brother. Love your sister. In this, we know that we love God. And that's, that's the lesson for today. Wrap your arms around that and, and try. Try when you pray. If you can honestly say, God, I love you. But think it through first. Make sure that you've done some examination of self before you, before you say that. Ben, a pleasure to talk to you today. You know... What I like to do is always try to put the invitation out there. At the beginning of this video, there's my email address and my phone number. And I want you to feel free to contact me however you feel at ease doing. And we can discuss the readings of the day, what, what I had to say about them. We can even talk about what it would take to save you from yourself, to, to allow you to be one of Christ through belief, repentance, and baptism, which is what Jesus commanded in the Gospels. That invitation is to you. It's always there. And I want you to feel free to contact me anytime to discuss these things. I want to thank you for listening this morning. I want to thank you for being here. Before we go to this, this song, would you bow with me as we talk to our God one final time in this, in this time we have. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you so very much for the opportunity to do this, to open your word and to read it, to study from it and to glean ideas and thoughts and to see your commandments to allow ourselves to review ourselves and to look into ourselves, to see if we are what you would like us to be. Please be with us, Father. Bless us through this upcoming week. Strengthen us and allow us, Father, to be the lights of this world, to be the strength of a torn and desperate people. Allow us to show your love 
to all those around us. It's in Jesus' blessed name that we pray. Amen. Again, thank you so much for being here. God bless you all. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee all the follies of sin I resign. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior art thou. Jesus is now. I love thee because thou hast first loved me and purchased my pardon on Calvary's tree. I love thee for of glory and endless delight. I'll ever adore thee in heaven so bright. I'll sing with a glittering crown on my brow. If is now